Hey guys, Thomas Busby here again. And last week I had a nice little milestone of hitting 3,000 subscribers and I put up a poll on the website, on my social media, sorry, asking what you guys would like to see next from my YouTube channel. And the options were either another lens review or an update on my 2014 Toyota High Ace van conversion project. And while the votes weren't even close, this week we're looking at my van. Now I know I mentioned this in a previous video, but I thought I'd quickly recap it again for this one. So to start with, the first thing I did was build and insulate the entire floor. So to start with, I had some 30 mil wood and I just framed up all around the edges and a bit through the middle just to add some support as well. And that went down first and I just glued that down. The reason I went 30 mil wood is because the insulation I wanted to use for the floor was XPS foam. This is very rigid and very insulative. And that's also 30 mil thick. So that went in between all the wood. On top of that, I had some plywood. And once that was sitting on top and cut to all the shapes, I sealed all around the edges, just so my entire floor was waterproof and I painted all this plywood as well. Just because if I ever spilt anything, I didn't want water getting down underneath my floor and rusting out my van where I couldn't get to it. And once that was done, I put this laminate clip together flooring on top, which is once again waterproof. So it's very, very waterproof and very, very sealed. Around the edges though, I did have, I have put this um, like aluminium trimming bracket what would you call it? Yeah, it's a trimming, just to protect the edges. And everywhere I think I was going to be getting in and out, pretty much all the doors and anything I was going to be sliding stuff over, this stuff here is kind of like a, it's kind of like a really hard chalk on the edge. I'm not sure what exactly it's made out of, but it is a little bit brittle. I think that would wear out quite quickly. So the trim, I think, was required. Um, and then in certain spots like this, I had to be aware of certain holes. So that there is to get to my drop my spare tyre, and I've got another one up the front for a fuel pump. And so I did have to have some holes and trying to make them sealed but still accessible was important as well. Once the floor was done and framed out everywhere, I insulated all my walls and all my ceiling with woolen insulation. Now the reason I went woolen insulation rather than any other is because I was stuffing this insulation everywhere. I didn't know where exactly it was going because I was just shoving it into every little gap and I didn't want it to go mouldy and I didn't want it to catch fire because with all the cables and electronics I'm putting this insulation around I didn't want anything to short out and burn my van to the ground. So the whole lot is fully insulated and that, that took a while but wall was definitely the way to go for that. Actually my curtains are cool, hold on. So these I'm really proud of, there's three parts to them. The first front side here, this is that windshield protection stuff you get from just like car places, the one that just goes across the front of your car. Buying it in bulk, in like the largest sheets I could when the um, car dealership, the car parts dealership had a sale, I, it was cheaper than buying the actual material. So I think I brought 10 of those, the biggest I could get, XL window sun shield protectors. The other side of that is some vinyl material, and inside of that I've got more of that, I think it's roughly about an inch thick, woolen insulation. Now I'm not the sewing genius, so I'm lucky enough to have a mum who is, who has made these up like these, these pillows. And inside of here, we've got, on this one it's only got two at the top, magnets installed. So when it comes to installing it, that just clips into place. I'm not sure, worried about this one hanging down at the bottom here, purely just because I'm going to have either like a box or the bed up against it to hold it in place. But for some of the bigger ones and more, I'll definitely have more magnets. These two, I've just on these smaller windows now, we're just done as a test. So I've still got to build the rest of these, but I love these, real proud. And to get the sizing, I just got some like scrap corrugated cardboard and made templates first and then just built everything from that. So that worked out awesomely. For my bed frame, it started with two, like I think the four mil 90 degree L brackets that of aluminium that I just stuck along the side of the van. So I already had holes along the side of the van from where this, I don't know, these panels are attached. And so I pulled them off, filled that full of insulation, and then when I put them back on through the holes, I put bolts from the back with the L brackets on there so I can attach my bed slats across. And that works really well. And the reason I went with that is one, the aluminium is actually really, really cheap. It's pretty strong but it's far, far lighter than wood, and it's cheaper than wood as well. But just the aluminium wasn't enough once the bed slats were on to support the bed slats. Well, the bed slats aren't strong enough just to support themselves. So after the bed slats were in, I worked out this giant plywood T just across it, just to have that support down the middle. That there is more than rigid enough to support my weight. I probably could do with a second over here if I'm going to have two people sleeping in it a lot, but I mostly plan to have some um, like boxes, some storage to the right-hand side of this, so I don't think that'll get a lot of usage, but it's still more than strong enough to protect 
and hold my weight. The wheel arches, they were just, once again, some 12 more boxes that are filled up once again with this XPS, XPS foam, just to give some sound dampening and once again more insulation to those wheel arches as well. So nothing at the moment is attached to the floor. Like, it's, it's sitting on it, but nothing's screwed down. And I kind of don't want it to be one, because I want my floor to be as like waterproof and sealed as possible. I'd also like to be able to take it out, because <laughs> I've never done anything like this before, and sell it as just a really nice floored van if someone prefers just an empty project with no holes in the floor. So everything is just bolted to the side. I've actually had to do no extra holes and just the pressure and weight of everything is holding everything in place. And it's solid. It doesn't rattle at all when I'm driving like it's worked out really well. However, once my mattress was on top, I realized there's quite a large gap here for where the, like, the mattress starts to hit the side and where the door closed. And I was worried about like pillows and items, et cetera, falling down. So this here is just bolted through the aluminium bracket and two of the slats just to have a like a shelf there to stop items from falling down. I think I might do like a like a big pillow or something to sit here temporarily, but I don't want to block off the back window so I can still see when I'm backing up and reversing, etc. But that there was an easy fix just to fill that gap. And it was it was really surprising how big that gap was. For the front of the bed, I had another aluminium L bracket that went across the length of it just attached to the two L brackets that went down the side and then I attached this plywood to the front of that and then this tailboard to the front of that with holes going all the way through with these big black bolts just to hold it in place just to, so when I slam on my brakes to stop the mattress from sliding forward and moving around too much. I definitely still need to seal and or, or paint everything but at the moment I'm just putting it all together to make sure that everything fits to see where I've got to drill holes etc. But this this here was actually a real pain in the butt to do, purely just because nothing in the van is straight. Like the edges, the corners here, it all curves in and around and up. So it wasn't just an easy case of dropping in one piece. I had to have this joint into it. And I think I might still cut down a little bit like that, just for when I sit on it, it doesn't dig into my thighs as much. So that's why I haven't stained and painted anything yet, because I'm not 100% set on the lot. For the face of this, um, plywood here. I've got to work out my doors and what I'm going to do as far as underbed storage goes and like these aren't set in place yet. Like this bit of wood here still needs to be attached and that just goes to those wheel art bo arch boxes underneath and then you can see without this it just rattles but once that is fixed far more solid and so I've got to do a little bit more internal framing in there and this one here is going to be my toilet which is in there it'll be out of the box and I'll put my curtains down there once I'm driving around without all of them. I've got quite a gap down the side of my bed here for, for two reasons. One, if I want to put in a king size mattress, I can and I've got the space. But as I mostly plan for it to be just me traveling around, I'm going to build some storage boxes along here just to like clothes and camera gear, etc. And they'll just be maybe bolted down to a couple of the permanently attached slats so I can have some storage and it stops my mattress from sliding around. But the reason I want them permanently is if I ever decide to go away with my partner, I can easily remove those boxes and put in a bigger size mattress, which I already owned if I want to. But at the moment, I've still got to build those boxes as well. And I mean, build the rest of these curtains too. Kitchen was actually a pretty big project that required quite a bit of planning. I guess the initial parts were just how to keep it steady and stable. So behind, well underneath my driver's seat there, there's an empty battery compartment for a spare battery. And so I've got this big giant bit of, I don't know what that is, block of wood, I think it's carry, it's stupidly heavy, and bolted that through to that empty space underneath. So that was just empty board that was easy. Or the holes are already there actually from a cage that was attached to separate the driver's area from the back. And then some an 18 mil bit of plywood, just as like I got that as just a, a quarter cut on its own, just as a real strong vertical support. The other side, which is just attached to that bed frame. So once again, nothing's attached to the floor, but it is still really solid. Like I can shake the whole van from that, but I don't want any, like I said, any holes in the floor. So once the bigger bolts came through to attach just another bit of plywood to that side and a little space filler in there, I had my sides for my kitchen. I did make this um, these horizontal supports for my bench to go on top of, but now that I've done it, they really don't need to be there. Like one more vertical leg in the middle is enough to hold this bench. The plumbing I also haven't finished as well. So part of the requirements are the water tanks, etc., need to be secure. So in my, my subfloor, I cut these little gaps just for these to sit here, but I'm gonna have to have something on top to stop them jumping as well. And I was warned about this, but I really didn't pay enough attention to it, and I wish I had more, is being mindful of the space between the sink and your water tanks. Being able to fit like your pipe in, like I need to have a loop 
this pipe's far too long at the moment, so I've got space to cut out of it. But it'll loop in it for a smell trap so it can still fit into there. Like that's just low enough to still drain from the sink. I'm a little bit nervous about it. And then fresh water was easy air. So in New Zealand, you need to have as a minimum 25 litres of fresh and 25 litres of grey. So my grey water still needs to have this installed somewhere along the highest point and this pipe that 12 mil pipe that goes along and leads out and vents out of the van. So I've still got to do that. The, the bench is just one of those pre-made ones I got from Bunnings and I just had to cut the hole out for the sink and for the, the hand pump. Um, this was a little bit nerve-wracking. I mean, this, these are only like a, a hundred bucks and it's just one straight cut off the edge and then cutting to the, fit the corners in because nothing in the van is straight. But cutting that big hole out of it is while I had the horizontal supports because I was worried about the structuralness of it. But like I said, those horizontal supports underneath really, really weren't required once it's all done. These, that this hand pump is a real common one you can get and they're, they're like 60, 65 bucks. But they only attach to 18, no, 16 mil thick wood and my bench is I think it's like 24, 28. So I had to also, with a, like a hole saw, drill out like another 10 mil just so I could do the clamp up underneath to fit this. That was once again also a little bit fiddly but it still comes out like everything came together real tidy. All the edges look good. I'm, I'm real happy with how that's gone so far. And, I guess the tricky one was actually just finding anyone that knew anything about hosing and, and pipe. So most plumbing places deal with like a hard plastic area, uh, piping, sorry, and to find one that deals, deals with like soft, like bendable rubber piping that could still be weather, weather sealed, water sealed, was tricky to do. And this pipe was stupidly expensive, but it was an easy fix. Um, but it wasn't too bad. Like watching just lots and lots of YouTube videos kind of gave a lot of answers for a lot of that. So another thing I still really want to do is build a box actually, like a seat that sits right here for me to sit on. I mean this kind of works right now, but this driver's seat is out of action so that doesn't quite work. I've still got to finish up my plumbing, I've got my, my front to my kitchen, oh here, that, I'll show you that. Yeah, so I'm not going to just leave my kitchen open like that, I've got this bit of plywood here, which fits in. And I've still got to cut my doors in it and build my doors onto that, which I'm real happy with that final product. I've never done ca cabinetry or plumbing or building. I've never done anything before. This is purely just from watching YouTube videos and asking people that know the best way to do it. So I'm excited to have that attached and finished. But at the moment, one, to make it easier to show you guys, and two, because it's easier to work on, that's not attached yet. Another thing I did just to keep things relatively square and straight was these little aluminium L brackets again that once again they were just off cuts from the bed just two holes four holes on each side and just to hold things square and level like they they're not strong but they do a good job of keeping things aligned so I need to use quite a few of them around the kitchen and in certain support areas just to to lock things in place um, another thing like down the back this here is a it's either a fuel pump or water pump I needed to get to and so I I've seen some people just cover this up but as far as maintenance goes, I didn't want to block out anything. It's really bright. Another thing as far as maintenance, etc., goes, I see lots of people just completely cover up their floor, but there's a, I see the fuel pump or water pump underneath here that I wanted to be able to get to. So this was actually kind of easy to sort out. That's just a bit of leather there, just as a tab with a small gap for it to fit through. And that there is just attached to well, several parts. Like I said, that's my painted floor, just to keep that partly sealed. And one thing I have done in the past is I had that underneath and pushed it down, I couldn't get it back up. So I do have like a little half hole in here just so I can put a screw into it and pull it up if I ever need to. So I might not actually need that leather tab, but it's in there now. And underneath that is just another bit of this insulation and my, I'm pretty sure it's a fuel pump underneath there. So that still keeps it all sealed. That goes back on top in place. And this is always a little bit fiddly there. So that is, a little bit obvious to look at, but it hides pretty well and that leather handles all the beating. And like I said, now that I've, with that little, mm, actually, without the leather, getting the floor up, would like I'd have to scrape it with a screwdriver and I'd damage it over time. So the leather is still definitely the best way to go. I guess I really need to stress that I've never done anything like this before, even closely remote to, remote to building. So if you've been thinking about it, because it's a good time to travel locally, I'd encourage just doing your research and diving in. I've been pretty lucky in having some parents with some tools, like a drop saw and a jigsaw, etc. So not having to buy them made it easy, especially say with the curtains, not having to learn how to sew them up. But that was a lot of, that will be a lot easier as well once I get them all made. But all I've done is just watch maybe six months of YouTube videos of people, say, building floors and building cabinetry and kitting out vans. And then 
like I said, asking people in the know. So like I went to a local cabinetry gentleman, a, a kitchen builder, and asked if I could just have five minutes of his time just to ask some ideas about suggestions. Like he was the one that came up with the aluminium L brackets rather than wooden framing, and the, the, the T for under the bed to support the weight of it. it. It hasn't been hard. It's kind of like being playing with big, big Lego. And everything you kind of just do slowly. I just planned out the ideas, and it's, and it's coming together, and I'm happy with it. I'm really enjoying doing it. I thought from watching a lot of YouTube videos that some people really took ages, like ages and ages to do their builds. And after starting it and having no experience in any form of construction, I see why it takes so long. I don't, I don't want to mess it up because it's, oh, it's, it's cost a little bit. I reckon I may be at around like a grand and a half, two grand New Zealand dollars. So cl closer to the grand and a half mark for everything. So that's like the bench, the, the plumbing, the wood, the mattress, the insulation, the flooring. Yeah, around that grand and a half to two grand New Zealand dollars. So if that's US dollars, we'll say a thousand bucks roughly. Um, so it's costing a little bit, but like I said, it's been real enjoyable doing. It's just a lot like Big Lego. And if you've been thinking about how, like, if you're capable of doing it, I reckon if I can do it with nearly no experience, but just from asking the people, and I'm not starting a certain part of a build until I've, I've, I'm confident in what I'm final product is going to be, then I reckon you can do it as well. So if you're thinking about kitting out your van, I would encourage it. And well, yeah, I've, I'm excited to get it finished and I'm really excited to get on the road, really excited to get on the road. And I guess I've also got to try and find a way to possibly sometimes bring Bonnie, my dog, along with me. So I think I'm gonna have to make some form of mat or so I can harness her into the front just to, to keep her protected while we're driving around because Bonnie's got to come sometimes too. But thank you very much for following along. If you have any questions about what I've done in my van, please let me know down in the comments below. Or if you'd like to see more photographic stuff in a final van video once this is all complete, whenever that'll finally be, feel free to hit that subscribe button. But otherwise, until then, me and Bonds will catch you next time. <laughs>